William, the consumer now wants index funds. Any change in sight? Uh, Tom, I mean, I think that one of the great things at the moment is now is probably the best time ever to be an investor in many senses, if you think about it. The costs of assembling, uh, you know, a diversified pool of stocks, uh, 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 assembling and maintaining a diversified pool of stocks it is lower than it's ever been. Um, now the choice that we've also got and the beauty of it is is that we've now got better benchmarking so we actually can pick out uh, active managers for their genuine stock selection alpha uh, not just kind of style surfing as many have been over many years and decades and making a bit more money than they should have from that. Uh, so now you've got the choice um, and the ability <coughs> not just to go active versus passive, but right. use both and that's really what we're trying to do on behalf of investors I think. The active defense is it has been truly a great bull market. We can discuss forever why that is. But in a bull market, index funds seem to do better, or is it, the, is it that active does worse? Well, it hasn't been a great period for active. I would suggest that some of that may be due to um, the idea that there's simply too many chasing uh, a finite pool of uh, inefficiency. Um, we wouldn't say that markets are more or less inefficient now. And I think, you know, we do have a better understanding of some of the behavioral shortcomings uh, of investors. And that still gives us plenty to go for uh, in terms of that, um, you know, going active relative to a benchmark. But you're right. Uh, it's been great period for just the basic 60-40 portfolio. You know, that is been a beast in this uh, cycle. Uh, if you've just sat there, not done TAA, not done active, uh, you've done pretty well. Thank you very much. And because of several providers, you can do that very, very cheaply as well. So, but that's not the deck of death of active altogether. But what we would say is that the most important thing is to use it. You've now got the ability to use both uh, and use them uh, with discretion. Um, William, when you look at equities, are they overvalued? We see record highs, but we see a, a lot of mess, including virus and, and other things. Yeah, Francine, I mean, the valuation debate has dogged this whole cycle, hasn't it? And I think one of the things that we always find is, you know, the, the four most dangerous words in investing are meant to be it's different this time. But the reality is it's subtly different every single time. And uh, the problem that we have always with comparing today's titans relative to yesteryears, you know, if you go back right to the beginning of the S&P, it's 12 railroad companies. Now, how do I viably compare those or even the pre-war uh, oil stocks, you know, to today's tech titans? You know, previously, you know, big industrial companies used to have to go and borrow a load of money money build loads of stuff uh, and it's high risk enterprise. But you can compare it to what we saw 10 years ago. Yeah, well, even there, you know, the economic context is different and you have, it's always evolving. And I think one of the points that we'd make about today's companies relative to yesteryears is they're just less risky in many senses. They're not capitally consumptive in the way. They're funding out of free cash flow. How do you compare those relative to yesteryears? Now, I would argue right now that looking at equity risk right. premium, you're at, you know, you've still got a bit of bit to go for.